Hi team! As you know, Bioware released a teaser trailer for the next Mass Effect game at the Video Game Awards last week. Mike Gamble tweeted that the trailer has a lot to unpack and he encouraged us to look and listen closely. There have been a lot of in-depth videos going over the dialogue in the trailer, but not much has been said about the visuals. After spending a week poring over galaxy maps and pictures of celestial objects, I think I found some new information. To start off, I need to orient you to the Milky Way galaxy. This is an artist's rendering of the Milky Way with some additions. You'll notice that it is rotated 180 degrees compared to the galaxy map in the game, but this orientation is useful for comparing to the trailer. Things you need to remember are that the Andromeda galaxy is on the same side of the Milky Way as Earth in the constellation Perseus, which is about 1 o'clock on this map. The constellation Cygnus, which will be important later, is at 3 o'clock. In order to convert between this map and the Mass Effect galaxy map, just add or subtract 6 hours. When the trailer opens, we see Andromeda to our left on the far side of the Milky Way's galactic core. This means we're starting somewhere around the 8 o'clock position. On the Mass Effect galaxy map, that would put us in the 2 o'clock position in the region of the Far Rim and the Perseus Veil. As we dive into the plane of the galaxy disk, we are heading a little to the right of the galactic core toward the Phoenix massing. The first thing we hear is a clip from the 1938 radio broadcast of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. This serves two purposes. First, it tells us that we will be hearing radio messages sent in the past, but as we move closer to the source, which is Council Space and Earth, we will intercept more recent messages. Secondly, the phrase, We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched, is a clue to what comes next. We pass a nebula which resembles M76, the little dumbbell nebula in the constellation Perseus. It can't be that nebula, which is a lot closer to Earth than the far rim, but it might be a clue for us dumbbells to be thinking about Perseus. Because who lives hidden behind the Perseus veil? We have watched organics for over three centuries. I don't know if the Geth are dead or alive, but it looks like they're going to be important to the story of the next game. The next thing we see is a solar system with a big artificial disk. This is an Alderson disk. A megastructure. The closest analog you have is a Dyson Sphere. When completed, we will all upload to it. Alderson disks are huge and require a ton of resources. They're also not great for organic life forms because the part of the disk closest to the sun is too hot and the part furthest away is too cold. We'd probably prefer a ring world or a Dyson bubble. At the time of the original trilogy, there were no known structures of this size, but it could have been built in secret behind the veil. It would have taken a long time to build. We have been building the megastructure for 264 years. Thanks, Legion. I don't know what planet this is. There are about 30 gas giants in the Mass Effect wiki that look like this. When I remove the ones that aren't really in line with travel from the Perseus Vale to Council Space, and all the ones that share a system with a mass relay, that leaves about nine. If I had to guess, it could be Trigest in the Phoenix Massing, although that planet is supposed to have faint rings. If you can figure it out, please let me know. All of the planets that look like this in the Mass Effect wiki are sources of helium-3 fuel. This may imply that everyone is using old-fashioned gas to get around instead of relay travel. The next thing we see is rocks. Remember in Star Wars when the Falcon drops out of hyperspace into a bunch of rocks, and then they realize that Alderaan is gone? I think this used to be a planet. Next, there's debris from things made by humans and other races. And finally, a dead relay. The question is, which relay is it? The relay that got destroyed in Arrival was completely blown apart, and these rings are intact. It's possible this relay is standing in for all of the active relays in the galaxy at the time of ME3, and that all of them were blown up if Shepard picked destroy. Like in Arrival, they may have also taken out whatever system they were in. In the worst case scenario, it's the soul relay. I am very certain this is NGC 6960, the Witch's Broom Nebula in the constellation Cygnus. It's also known as the western part of the Veil Nebula. Like Earth, it's in the Orion spiral arm of the galaxy, but it's 1400 light years in the direction of the Krogan DMZ and the Cylean Nebula. We pan down to a planet with three moons and follow a ship called the Mudskipper to the surface. We see someone climbing what looks like a mountain, but it has wiggly hoses on it, which 
was a feature of both Reapers and Geth. An inactive Reaper is in the background. This makes the destroy ending seem like the most likely possibility, although it doesn't completely rule out the other endings. The figure stops and picks up the left side of an N7 helmet. I don't know how it got there. We see the Mudskipper crew, a Salarian, a Krogan, and a third figure that could be human. Now we see Liara, but she's aged since this trilogy. My guess is that it's been close to 650 years since the Reaper War, and this will bring the Milky Way up to the same time frame as Andromeda. Liara is not wearing a breather mask. That means the planet she's on isn't too cold to go out barefaced, and it has a breathable atmosphere, so it's not Alcara. It has three moons, so it's not Earth. The planet has also been attacked by Reapers, and it's at least 1,400 light years towards Cygnus from the Sol system. It would fit a lot better if it were 14,000 light years towards Cygnus, but there is one planet that otherwise fits all of these criteria Hytiana and the Cylian Nebula. Well, I was born in a log cabin on rural Hytiana to simple but loving parents just trying to. So, what do you think? Was this interesting or insane? Let me know in the comments.